If you had a huge shelf containing every single game with the word Mario in the title and went to pick one randomly, there's an extremely high chance that it would somewhere contain at least one arrangement of, or small nod to, the original Super Mario Bros. Overworld theme, commonly referred to as the Mario theme. But the most intriguing examples of this, to me at least, are when specific arrangements or versions of the Mario theme from one of these games then gets reused or referenced itself in a future title. What do I mean by this? Well, for a prime example, look no further than Super Mario RPG. If you've played this game, then you'd most certainly be familiar with this song, Let's Try, the track that plays during the file select. Now, to a lot of people, that may just sound like yet another of the hundreds of arrangements of this theme, with a slight variation in its beginning melody, but this one actually has some history to it. If you've ever been to an arcade and played the original Super Mario Bros. on a physical cabinet before, it's very possible that what you were playing wasn't a straight port of the NES game, although those cabinets do exist. What you may have actually been playing was Versus Super Mario Bros, a modified port of the game that's difficulty has been increased considerably in order to work with its scoreboard system and coin-operated pay-to-play arcade nature. So naturally, after getting a game over, you're taken to a name registration screen, where you can enter your initials and have your score added, and in this screen, a brand new track not found in the original can be heard. Yeah, that's actually the specific version of the Mario theme that Mario RPG is pulling from here, just in a swung rhythm and with a part of the actual Mario theme tacked on. If you feel like you've heard that original versus Super Mario Bros. track before, as in the 8-bit NES sound chip version, without having ever played versus Super Mario Bros., that's because you probably have. It was reused in both Mario Maker 1 and 2 as the bonus stage music for the Super Mario Bros. 1 style. And in Mario Maker 2, it's also remixed as the Sky theme for the Super Mario Bros. 1 style. A remix of a remix. A good thing this isn't the 2010s or I'd make that one joke that you're probably thinking in your head right now. Hi, it's Ty, back to talk about some more video game music, Easter eggs, and trivia. In this episode, we're covering the Mario RPG games, and by that I mean the Mario games that are JRPGs sans Paper Mario. So Super Mario RPG and the Mario and Luigi games. I could have just said that first, I guess. That would have made more sense. I was originally just going to do a short Mario RPG episode to celebrate the remix release, but the amount of trivia in that, as well as the Mario and Luigi games, is small enough that I decided to just combine them all in the same video. Just some little bonus treats on the house. No, 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 put your wallet away, Miss Mildred. I insist. So, Mario RPG. This game has a decent handful of musical references in it, but the majority are fairly obvious. Nothing that your average Mario fan wouldn't be able to pick up on. You know, you got your Mario 3 Slots theme, your Mario World theme, and even your Mario 3 King Koopa battle in two places, in fact. Okay, but how about the more interesting ones? Like, what about that Final Fantasy Culex fight? Does that one reference Final Fantasy music? Well, yeah, it does. This isn't difficult to surmise, I think just about everyone knows that, but you may not know what these tracks are specifically and what specific title they're from. That game is Final Fantasy IV, whose main villain was used as inspiration for Kulex's character. Is it Kulex? Kulex? I'm... D I don't... I don't fucking know. Both the battle music and victory music for this Kulex fight are the Final Fantasy IV version specifically. And of course, the post-battle music, which is the prelude theme that appears in 4, but also just about every single game in the franchise. Those aren't anything crazy, but I thought they deserved a mention. And, oh, 
I am already out of music references found in this game. That was quicker than I thought, but that doesn't mean I'm done talking about Mario RPG just yet. I have some more trivia surrounding this game to talk about later, after we take a break and bounce over to the Mario and Luigi games. So here's another one that's a similar case to that versus Super Mario Bros. one from the beginning. You know that map music from Superstar Saga? The one that's a mix of both the Mario 3 World 1 map theme and the Mario theme, of course? Well, this too is a reuse of a very specific past remix, another remix of a remix, and you won't believe what this one's from. Probably a game you've never heard talked about before in your life. Yeah, it's Super Pipe House from Mario RPG. That's so cute. Yoko Shimomura of Kingdom Hearts fame is actually the composer for both Mario RPG and the Mario and Luigi series. So I think that's fun that she got another use out of the track in a series that's more or less a spiritual continuation of Mario RPG. I love that. Speaking of the Mario theme, just wanted to give an honorable mention to the fact that Mario hums it while taking a shower in Superstar Saga. La la la. <laughs> <laughs> Which is super reminiscent to how he whistles the same thing while taking a shower in Mario RPG. Oh, and also, when you use the snack basket move in Bowser's Inside Story, it also plays the Mario theme intro. <laughs> Despite this being a huge game from my childhood, I somehow never noticed that until the replay of the game I did during the writing of the script, so I wanted to sneak that one in. Well, in the spirit of seemingly obvious things, here's a few quick ones from the Mario and Luigi series that are, in fact, obvious, but probably unbeknownst to at least some of you out there. You have the classic Starman theme in one of the mini games in Superstar Saga. Which is actually pulling from a specific version of the Starman theme from a later Mario title. And no, it's not Mario 64, like you might be thinking. It did appear there as the Wing Cat music. but it actually appeared first in Yoshi's Island. And speak of the devil, the title screen music from Yoshi's Island appears in Partners in Time as, you guessed it, the theme of Yoshi's Village. which you may also recognize as Yoshi Village from the original Paper Mario, which released before Partners in Time. And hey, this one isn't technically in the game, but did you know that some of the Japanese commercials for Superstar Saga used an orchestrated version of the Mario World theme for some reason? <laughs> Well, how about the original compositions from these games? Uh, are any of them reused in subsequent installments? Well, yeah, actually, there's a few. One you may have picked up on at some point was that Bowser's theme from Inside Story is reused in Dream Team and Paper Jam. Also, although it's not an actual reuse of the theme, Driftwood Shores from Dream Team was definitely written to have the same vibe and chord progression as Oho Oasis from Superstar Saga. The Mario Wiki claims that parts of the song are arrangements of the other, but I think it's more accurate to say it's a track largely inspired by it, due to no actual direct quotations, at least that I can hear after listening to it a ton of times. A somewhat similar case to this is an inside story. Well, it's similar in that I don't think it's an actual direct quote from a song, but more of a loose nod of sorts. So in Deep Castle, towards the end of the game, a track is playing that features a little background harpsichord riff. It's said that this is actually Cacletta's theme from Superstar Saga. Now, 
Well, these are just different enough that I was reluctant at first to say that this was intentional. Like, the first six or seven notes are the same, but both of these melodies diverge pretty heavily after that. Like, here's that deep castle riff again. And here's Cacletta's theme in the same key, so it's easier to compare. I showed this to a couple of my friends though, and they both said that this was definitely Cacletta's theme, so I think I might just be overly skeptical here. At the very least, I can confidently say that this was a very similar melody meant to be a nod to Cacletta's theme, but I'm not personally convinced this was a literal appearance of the tune, more so evoking the feel to show that Cacletta's influence is still lingering in these games since Superstar Saga. I don't know though, maybe I'm just crazy. Let me know what you think. But don't worry, here's an undeniable one. I've never played the Inside Story remake, so I wasn't aware of this, but apparently two new tracks were added into the game. The main game, not the Bowser Jr.'s Journey side mode. In the original, both the Dark Star Battle and Dark Fawful Battles use the game's regular boss music. But in the remake, these are swapped out for their very own battle themes. The Dark Stars is a new, completely original song. But Dark Fawfuls has something of note to it. This is the return of the first Kakleta battle theme from Superstar Saga. So there's your direct Kakleta related musical quote. By the way, thank you to my friend Meatball for pointing those out. These two wouldn't have been in the video if he hadn't alerted me to their existence. Alright, let's close out the video by going back to some more Super Mario RPG. So I talked about musical references and reuses in this game, but what about references and reuses from this game in other games? Well, an arrangement of Hello Happy Kingdom is in Fortune Street, which isn't that surprising given that Square developed this game. But a fairly sneaky one can be found all the way back in the first Mario Party of all things. This one is really cool to me for some reason. Take a listen to the music from Bowser's Magma Mountain. Yeah, that's so weird, isn't it? What an oddly specific place to put a Mario RPG reference. Like, it's definitely on theme being a Bowser-related stage, but this is one of only a few times music from that game ever appeared in other places, and it's in Mario Party. For the longest time, to my understanding, Square owned most of the material that was completely original to Mario RPG, so that's most likely why examples of that taking place are so scarce. You may be thinking, what do you mean? Isn't there Mario RPG music in Smash? Well, despite what your memory might be telling you, no, there isn't. But it's funny that you say that in your own head, because it's entirely possible that at one point there was going to be Mario RPG music in Smash. So, Super Smash Bros. Brawl has a lot of unused content in its files. You've probably heard about the crazier stuff like the fighters and mechanics and whatnot, but there's also some music in there that never made the final cut. Well, not really music, as much as it is a collection of blank files containing no actual music in them, but they all have file names, and that's something. One of these is named Morino Kinoko, which in Japanese translates to forest mushrooms, which has naturally led people to believe that this slot was a remix of arguably the most well-known song from Mario RPG, Beware the Forest Mushrooms, the theme of the forest maze. However, as cut and dry as this seems, a lot of people claim that what this is actually referring to is Toadwood Forest from Partners in Time, not Beware the Forest Mushrooms, due to its position in the list, right after Gritzy Desert and another unknown and unused Partners in Time track, which would make the list out of order in terms of chronological release dates if it was from Mario RPG. All the legal weirdness with Square is also often cited as a reason, as many find it unlikely that a track from that game could even end up here in the first place. Just a side note, if Toadwood Forest was in Smash, they'd have to do some pretty creative shit with it, because this one is pretty boring, in my opinion.
Which of the two songs this title was actually referring to is still debated even today, but personally, I don't buy the whole Toadwood Forest argument. Its position in the list doesn't mean that much when you see that other tracks break the chronological order thing, like a Mario 64 remix being listed after some Sunshine ones. Plus, Toadwood Forest already has a name in Japan, and it's Kinipuru no Mori, not Mori no Kinoko. Why would Smash change the title for the remix when they, like, don't ever do that? At least, not like this. Maybe I'm completely off base here, and there's some possible reason for it that I just don't know about, but it just doesn't make sense to me. I find it much more likely that this was supposed to be the Mario RPG song, and legal stuff with Square might be the reason it went unused. But that's just my take. I guess we won't know until the track somehow gets leaked, or if someone working on the game talks about it at some point. Until then, it's but a mystery. Wow, I just spent like three whole minutes talking about a song that doesn't even exist. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. But hold on a minute. I'm forgetting something. There's another officially licensed Nintendo product with Mario RPG music that went unused. You want to guess what that is? Was your guess the fucking Mario movie? <laughs> okay, so it's pretty well known that this movie has like a bajillion Mario music references in its score. They're all amazing, go look them up. And it's also pretty well known at this point that the film had a lot of cut music from it that was either replaced by licensed songs or just didn't end up appearing at all. All of that music is thankfully preserved in the official soundtrack, which you can find on YouTube, Spotify, all those places. But wait, I lied actually. Not all the soundtrack appears in that version. For some bizarre reason, there's a bit of music that's different only in the vinyl release of this OST. It's in the track Bonus Level. Yeah, that's straight up Hello Happy Kingdom from Mario RPG. That's such an insane discovery, like, what? Why is that there? I said earlier that this was unused because the prevailing theory is that this is an unused version of the track. That hasn't actually been confirmed anywhere though, to my knowledge, so it's entirely possible that this was just an easter egg thrown in there for fun as a little treat for those who purchased it on vinyl. But that seems weird, right? It makes more sense to me that this was an earlier version that was changed, possibly because of licensing. But then, did they decide to license it just for the vinyl version? Or was that process already in place but didn't finish in time for the original soundtrack's release, so they stuck it in the vinyl version instead? Maybe they had the license the whole time, but just didn't want people to know because the Mario RPG remake hadn't been announced yet, and then was put back into the vinyl release because it was after that announcement had already happened. Point is, this is an incredible discovery, and I'm really glad I stumbled on this while I was writing the script. Eat it, game of spleen. But hey, that's all I have for you. I hope you learned at least a couple of new tidbits. As always, let me know if there's any trivia I missed or if you have any for any other games in existence. I always love hearing new tidbits and hey, you may even end up in a future episode. Who knows? Oh, and by the way, yes, the Versus Super Mario Bros. name registration theme from the beginning is also the song that was used for the character select in the classic yet unofficial Flash fan game, Super Mario Crossover, in case you were wondering. That's actually where I heard the song first, not Mario Maker. At least like 10 of you out there are having an out-of-body experience being reminded of that game. And as always, I'd like to thank my scrunklies over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me. Prism, April B, Creative JK, Adelaide Parade, May Lynn, Soy Sauce Flavored Tide Pod, Galaxy, Chico Mode, Pew Willover, Fred Shrooms, Blarken Snarf, Frigid Duck, Rubbish Bunny, The Siberian, Goji Dragon, Awesome Ace Z, Xeno Dude Face, Wunga, Lilith Swartzlander, Just Jenny, Fedco, Zaysir, Wilford MF Wharf, Daniel the Spaniel, Certainly Cecilia, The Papini Bros Emporium, Kanachansan, Sledmasters, and Cat Does a Thing. If you'd like to join these wonderful folks, you can check out my Patreon in the link in the description. Anyways, thank you for watching, and peace out.
I'm not any smart, smart, smart. I'm book smart. I'm not any smart, smart. Oh,